Hey, welcome back to the channel everybody and if this is your first time tuning in I would appreciate it if you subscribe and if you hit the bell you'd receive notifications of future videos so welcome to May it is May 3rd it is about 30 in the afternoon temperatures about 87 degrees and the humidity is in the mid 40s and it feels fantastic so this is such an exciting time of the year to keep bees because spring is in full effect there are plenty of flower species in bloom, which are excellent nectar and pollen sources for the bees. So that's gonna be it for the intro. Let's get into hive number one and see how they're doing from last week. So this is just gonna be a routine inspection. So for this time of year, in addition to just peeking into the honey super, more so out of curiosity, be checking for swarm cells. That's the, prime, the primary goal this time of year just to possibly prevent any kind of swarms and if you do find queen cells supersedural cells swarm cells whatever there may be at that point it's really just determining whether or not the colony has swarmed and if they haven't there's a few steps to take in order to pre prevent them from swarming so either way routine inspection of hive number one if you look back at some previous videos, I swapped a super, something sticking me in the, sticking me in the palm here. Can't really see it. I swapped a previous super with this one that had some drawn comb because the bees were not working it very much. And I think this might be the last video I mentioned that because that was a few weeks ago. So either way, looks like the bees are in the top box. There's obviously a nectar flow happening for coastal Carolina just because, you know, it's May and, like I said, there are plenty of things blooming. So yeah, they're doing a good job. They're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing and slowly drawing out the honey super. So that is, that is fantastic to see finally. I feel like, I feel like I waited a little... I don't want to say too long because we still have the, the full month of May and June for the bees to capitalize but if you can tell hopefully you can see that all that shiny substance glistening in the cells is nectar that they will eventually cap once they cure it down below 18.6 percent water content in case anybody was wondering I just want to take a look at one more, one more frame, just get an idea how they're doing. And it looks like they're doing just fine. They, they may be doing a little better than they are. And the reason I say that is because last week I ended up robbing a frame of eggs out of this colony to help another colony. So that's quite a quite a few potential foraging bees in a few weeks that I took from them but sometimes you know that's just how that's just how things go I'm gonna see what's poking me in my hand real quick before I open this up and things get a little chaotic all right Nothing bee related. I was messing with a plant earlier that had some thorns, and it looks like one of the thorns got me in the palm of my hand. All right, so I'm gonna try and make this a relatively quick check. I'm not trying to disturb them too much. They're working the super, and that's actually gaining some weight, which is fantastic take a look at this real quick as you can see they're, they're actually closing off a good portion of the uh, honey super 
both wax and possibly some propolis. Yeah, like I said, I really just want to check on check on the colony, make sure the queen's doing her thing. Not trying to disturb them too much, but if you look in previous videos, you'll see that's exactly what happens each time with the plastic queen excluders. They kind of kind of kind of pops up and get a more a few more bees flying than you want. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just checking the honey, or I'm sorry, the queen excluder for the queen. As I mentioned in a previous video, that was a comment somebody left and I thought that was a really fantastic tip. So I'm just doing my part to share that with you. Never thought about that before, about the queen possibly being on the bottom side of the excluder. And if you're not looking for her or not paying attention, you could potentially put her as you can see, like I did, I rested it on top of the super, and if she was on the bottom side, I imagine she'd crawl down in the super. And like I was saying, if you're not paying attention to that, you could accidentally place the queen into the super, and you really wouldn't know, you wouldn't know any better until you came out next time and checked. All right, first frame, outside, not much. Inside of the frame, or the side of the frame that faces the inside of the hive, a uh, nice, nice food store, which is basically what I expect from the outside frames. Same thing with this. Some open cells. They're dry. Same on this side. Center of the frame. Nice food store of nectar and some pollen, which is basically how the bees use the outside frames. You move the camera over there so you're not staring at the back of my shoulder. I noticed that in the previous video. The camera placement wasn't all that great. Alright. Let's see, what do we got here? This is always a weird frame. Is we got some wax here that they've tunneled behind. Got some queen cups. Totally dry. Nice nectar right here, some capped honey. A lot of open cells on this side. Be a good candidate for the queen to lay eggs in, but she hasn't made it that far yet. That was frame three. Here we go, frame four. Looks like we have some nice brood starting. Yeah, nice patch of brood right there. Looking, looking for the queen. Let's see what's going on on the other side. Hopefully the camera picks up on that, but if you look around the capped brood right there, you'll see little white grub looking things. Those are pupated larvae that haven't been capped yet. They'll be capped around the ninth day or 10th. Hard time remembering all the numbers. But let's take a look right next to some of this capped brood looking for eggs. And yeah, yeah, there's eggs. If you can see this, there's eggs all throughout this left side here. So that's good. They're still queen right. So at this point, I'm going to try and move through the frames rather quickly so I'm not in the hive too long but I'm also going to try to move rather slow as to not disturb the bees too much. And now I'm really just checking for any signs of swarming. So supercedural cells or swarm cells, which are found towards the bottom of the frame. Supercedural cells are found typically on the top third of a frame. I don't recall having found this queen in previous videos, so she's a pretty elusive one, which typically doesn't matter as long as you can find evidence that they are queen right which I have by finding 
eggs. This frame has a lot of nice pollen, some capped honey in the corner there, and some pupated larva throughout, so they're building up nicely. Even after robbing a full frame of eggs from them, they're still doing a good job. Yeah, they look nice. So far, so good. I've scraped that comb off the bottom of this frame before, or one of the frames. And they just continue to build it back, so... At this point, I'm just gonna... Just let them do their thing. Just gonna check for eggs again, just to see if we clean. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of pupated larvae throughout. Yeah, I've got eggs. Got eggs right there in the very few open cells above the above the capped brood there. All right, uh, take a look at the last three frames. Oh yeah, this queen has kicked into overdrive. That's some nice looking capped brood. Beautiful pollen. I'll show you real quick. Just check out the check out the shades of pollen there along the bottom of the frame and the, the side there. Very nice. And just out of curiosity, just to see if she's completely expanded the brood into this frame. Yep. Very, very easy to spot eggs with this flashlight. Yeah, she's doing a good job. And it's nice to experience a relatively calm hive. And they're not trying to make it known that you're not welcome by buzzing you like crazy. This frame has some nice weight to it. Let's see. Let's see what they're up to. Let's see, do we have eggs? Yeah, we got eggs here. A whole bunch, well, some capped brood, nice honey up top on surrounding it. I feel like this is one of those frames you'll, you'll find the queen on. Possibly, you know, possibly not. She is an elusive one. But I just want to show you real quick. Check out this food frame. Nice capped honey at the top. And look at all that pollen. How pretty that is. heavy. It's got some weight to it. I'd really like to see the see the queen, see what she looks like. She's doing an excellent job. And it doesn't look like I'm gonna see her today. But she's still she's doing a good job there. All right, well, that's it for hive number one. As you can see, they are queen right. Found found plenty of eggs, which is exactly what you want to see. Nice food stores. Plenty of nectar stored down in the brood box along with pollen, which is exactly what they need to feed the eggs and the larva until they become capped around day 10. So they are looking very, very nice. 
and I would expect over the next few weeks to start seeing a whole bunch more bees at the entrance as a lot of the capped brood starts to hatch. It's gonna put this final frame back in. There we go. Hive number one, looking pretty good. Good food stores. Placing honey up in the super, slowly but surely. And they are queen right, which has been a little bit of a challenge this year if you look back at previous videos. All right, well, hey, that does it for hive number one. <laughs> Check out our next video, which will be hive number two. I have had some struggles with that colony, but I'll, I'll talk about all that in the uh, intro for that video. So again, hey, thanks for watching Cole's Farm here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Beautiful Sunday, May 3rd, early afternoon. Weather's finally in. Check out other videos, and if you find anything on our channel that you like, you're always welcome to share it. Thanks again, everybody. <laughs>